A Grief Observed, written by C.S. Lewis and first published under the pseudonym N.W. Clerk in 1961, is a profound reflection on the experience of bereavement following the death of his wife, Helen Joy Davidman. The book comprises of reflections he wrote after his wife's death and before death is transformed by grief into a more habitual, less acutely painful state. It's a candid exploration of Lewis's sorrow, his struggle with faith, and his journey through the wilderness of loss. The book opens with Lewis reeling in the immediate aftermath of his wife's death. He describes the numbness and sense of unreality, the routine of empty rituals, and the moments in which the full weight of bereavement crushes him. The challenge is both emotional and spiritual. Lewis feels his faith shaken to its core. The rationalizations and comforts offered by others seem trite and ineffective against the rawness of his pain. He confronts both the silence of God and the torments of memory, which serve to reopen the wound of loss repeatedly. Lewis goes on to discuss his relationship with his late wife and the love they shared. This deep affection and companionship underscore the magnitude of his loss. He wrestles with the concept that God is using his pain for some higher purpose, a concept he finds difficult to accept. He grapples with the theological implications of his suffering, questioning how a loving God could permit such anguish, and at times Lewis feels abandoned by God. Throughout the book, Lewis reflects on the nature of grief itself. He observes that grief behaves like a wave, with moments of reprieve, followed by moments of overwhelming sorrow. He speaks of the fear that he might forget his wife, or that his memories of her might erode over time. Simultaneously, he contemplates the paradox that his wife is both utterly gone and yet somehow present, not as a ghost, but through the indelible impact she made on his life. Lewis also examines the way his grief affects his perception of the world and other people. He finds himself alienated from those who have not experienced a similar loss, as they appear to inhabit a different reality. He experiences moments of irrational anger and bitterness, and the mundane concerns of others seem vastly insignificant compared to the tragedy he has endured. At various points in his journey, Lewis questions his understanding of God's nature. He wonders whether God is less of a benevolent father figure and more of a cosmic vivisector, inflicting pain as part of some grand experiment. His anguish makes him temptingly receptive to this narrative and throws him into spiritual turmoil. However, over time, Lewis begins to reflect more deeply on the character of God. He reconsiders his initial impressions and starts to recognize that his picture of God was too simple, too human. He starts grappling with the idea that his own concepts may have been idols, not truly God. The pain and the absence of his wife, he realizes, challenge him to look beyond his preconceived notions and to seek a more profound and complex understanding of the divine. Though a grief observed does not follow a strict progression from despair to hope, there is a subtle shift in Lewis's tone as the book nears its conclusion. He begins to find a semblance of peace, not in answers, but in acceptance of the mystery that is God and the path that he must now walk as a widower. He acknowledges that he may never fully understand the reasons behind his suffering or the nature of God, but he slowly starts to reconcile his faith with his experience. Lewis starts to see moments of beauty and love in his memories of his wife, recognizing them as gifts rather than sources of pain. He comes to terms with the notion that the pain he feels is a testament to the love they shared. The raw edges of grief start to dull ever so slightly, not removing the sense of loss, but transforming it into something more bearable, a part of his life rather than the entirety of it. In the final pages of the book, Lewis's introspection leads him toward a renewed sense of companionship with God. Though he had felt abandoned, he begins to sense that God was there in the darkness all along, suffering alongside him. Moreover, he ponders the afterlife, where he hopes to be reunited with his wife, free from the barriers that separated them in life. A Grief Observed concludes without any definitive answers to the questions it raises about pain, loss, and faith. However, Lewis comes to an understanding that his grief is a form of love, as intrinsic and irrefutable as any of life's great truths. He is left with an acceptance of grief as an essential part of the human experience, interwoven with love and existence, and a testament to the depths of human connection.